Hi, I have this beautiful piece of Damascus and I also have this beautiful design for a dagger, a, a stiletto dagger, I guess, I don't know. And there are so many little details in this knife that I'm so excited to make. But we got to start with making this blade out of this old chunk of steel. So I'll get the forge lit up so I can start hitting this thing with a hammer. So at the very ends of these bars here, um, I don't know if you can tell, there are some little delaminations, which might seem like a big deal. I'm honestly not too worried about it. I think I'll just sprinkle in a, a little bit of flux. That'll get rid of any of the bad stuff that's in there. Then just tap it back together and work it as I'm forging on the rest of this. I think it'll be fine. I'm really not too worried about it. It's looking great. Oh, that's not good. That's that uh uh um um I don't think I have to explain what went wrong there. That's not good. I'm going to try to hold it back together. <laughs> Uh, this just got really sketchy really fast. No! I'm not sure what to do. That's really bad. If that wasn't obvious enough. So that first one, I think I could have got back together. This is not going back together. So I think my only chance here, I think I have enough material here to draw out this blade. I think the only thing to do right now is to try it. Oh, that's not good. Wait, is it fine? Uh, that looks, that doesn't look good. Maybe it's just scale. Maybe it's just scale. Maybe I'm not seeing cracks. It's fine, it's, it's just scale. There's no cracks. God sends his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. I am not one of them, please make it stop. Oh wait? No, there's nothing, it's, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, sorry, I just have PTSD. All right, so this dagger is looking great. I got it thinned out quite a bit and I picked up a little bit of a warp. That's why I had to bend it back to straight. Just the heat while grinding will bend it sometimes. I am going to put some high heat spray paint on this. That'll just stop any oxidation while I'm heat treating this knife. And I am going to quickly normalize this knife before heat treating it. I'm normalizing it for the fourth time. I'm just that sketched out about this knife. Just to shrink the grain size, get rid of any stress in there, hopefully. And I have a little off cut that I normalize the exact same way and I'm going to heat treat the exact same way so I can snap it and take a look at the grain structure inside of the steel, make sure that's looking good because again, I'm very worried about the steel, but I, I think we're good. I think we got past the most difficult and sketchy part of this. Alrighty. 
Some people like straighten it while it's still hot. I don't have the balls for that. That's way too scary. What? Let's see if it does work. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so after tempering, this still has a little bit of a bend in it. So I'm gonna do a shim temper, which is just clamping it down uh, with a little bit of a bend in it. I have that little spacer, that that thing, to get it bent. <laughs> About there? Yeah, that might be a bit much. Okay, so now it's in the oven for two hours and hopefully this will be straight and heat treating will be done. Okay, so I just wanted to take a peek real quick and look how the thickness is looking. And a bit of a bump. That's only like two thou, it's not that big of a deal, but there is still a bump right in that section. So yeah, this is slowly getting thinner as it goes down. The blade has a bit of a hump. I'll fix that, then we'll have it slowly getting thinner as it goes down, which is perfect. So after that, that's 80 grit finished, and then we can do this with 120 grit, and then we can do this with 220 grit, and then we can grind the bevels. Okay, so before I grind the profiles onto this knife, what I, that's not right. Before I grind the bevels onto this knife, what I want to do right now is get the profile down. So right now there's one step down going into the tang, but we actually need two steps down. One is this, and that goes into the Rakaso. That's what this area is called. And then there's another step that's going down like that. And I just ripped the paper. And this is the tang that goes through the entire handle. And this shoulder is gonna be right up against the guard that I'm eventually going to make. So I need to lay this out so I can cut the Rakaso out of this section like that, and then cut the tang out of that section. That's not proportional, but that's about what I need to do. Let's, I punched the fan, let's get it. Nice. All right, this thing is looking pretty nice and I need to hand sand it now. Any bets on how long this is gonna take to hand sand? I'm thinking it's gonna take like five or six Taylor Swift albums. It is at like a 220 grit finish for an A100, which is a 200 grit equivalent-ish. Reload. And what's nice about this is the glue will like conform to the blade shape. So it holds it good. You know glue. It holds stuff good. Do I care? I don't care. So hand sanding this knife only took about 10 Brooklyn Nine-Nine episodes. I don't know the conversion rate right now, but we can acid etch the blade now to bring out the pattern in the Damascus and... That's so cool! Oh my god! So that stripe going through the plunge lines in the Rocasso is so cool. Like I couldn't have planned that better. Okay, I could have planned it if I thought ahead, but this is shaping up to be definitely the best knife I have ever made. I still need to make the guard and the handle and the uh, pommel, that's what that's called. And I'll be doing some stuff on that that I've never done before and I'm super excited, but that's it for now. You have a safe drive home, okay, bye. I didn't drop it.